We're the Indie Project, B and Theo, and we've been living and travelling the world in vans for the past six years. We're currently renovating an abandoned stone barn in Portugal to turn into a beautiful tiny home for us and our cats, Gingy Bear and Fernando. Follow our journey from the very beginning as we document the whole process of creating an off-grid home. Hello guys, welcome back to a brand new video. I'm just casually sitting on my sofa in my home. It seems so surreal to say that. But today we have a really exciting video for you guys because there's so many things that you want to know and in this video we're going to answer all of them. So the first question is, what happened to my pride and joy, my UTV? Hang and I, on, I should be your pride and joy. <laughs> you are my pride and joy. But my second pride and joy, my absolute beast. Hang on, what about the cats? Of a UTV. <laughs> this thing is incredible for farm work, for towing stuff, for going up and over things. I took it out on one of the crazy four x four tracks. Actually this morning, and I had two wheels off the ground, put it in four wheel drive and it just goes over anything. And we do use it on a daily basis. We just don't show it in the videos because we've been so focused on actually building out our home and moving into that. We haven't had much time to actually go in it or film in it, but it is here. And you will see in the future why this is gonna be such a brilliant asset for us. So another question we get is what is going on with our wonderful truck and if you cast your mind back to January when we had all of our floorboards in the back it broke down midway home because the clutch just completely went and we had no idea why. Well we've managed to diagnose it ourselves because the master cylinder was completely empty. We refilled that back up, pumped the clutch a few times and it all came shooting straight out the slave cylinder so we need to replace that which is something that we're going to be doing after Iceland right now. We don't need the, tri the truck all the time, I was going to say the trick. We don't need the truck all the time, but it will be really great to have it up and running again because it's so handy. <laughs> So we are currently sitting on Sunset Rock with our dog-like cat, Fernando. And the next question is, would you get like a guardian dog for our farm? Well, that is something that we have thought about in the past because obviously guardian dogs are very helpful. The problem is both of our cats are terrified of dogs, especially Gingy. I think that she must have had some sort of traumatic experience with one before we found her when she was a kitten. So at the moment it's a hard no because I really don't want to distress the cats. Also, <laughs> this might sound a bit mad, but also Gingy's already had to deal with Fernando coming into her life. I don't want her to then think, oh my gosh, they brought a dog in, they hate me. So for now it's a no, but I can definitely see the benefits of them. I'd like to say a huge thank you to Squarespace who have sponsored today's video. And we've actually been using Squarespace since 2017 when we had a major rebrand, changed our names and built ourselves a wonderful brand new website. 
Squarespace is a fantastic platform where you can build and design your very own website without any web design experience at all. It's so simple to use because they have a load of different themes for you to choose from that are customizable. You can change the colors, change the fonts, even build your own logo on there. I really enjoy the analytics feature because it shows me where people have come from online to see the content we've got on there. Are they reading our blog posts? What items in our shop are they checking out? And also how many people have clicked through to our newsletter. These are all fantastic features on Squarespace and if you'd like to try it out and build your own professional looking website all on your own then just click the link in our description or head to squarespace.com forward slash indie projects for a fantastic two week free trial and then 10% off your first purchase of a website or a domain. Make sure to use the code indie projects at checkout and get building your own website today. So the next question is, how big is your property and how big is the barn conversion that we have nearly completed? And the first one, this property, it's five acres. When we first bought it, this was our first ever property, our first ever land. So we didn't want to get anything too big and overwhelming to start with. And the actual house, that's 25 square meters, not including the mezzanine. Now we're close to moving into the barn. A lot of people are asking, well, where's the bathroom? And the thing is, it's behind me. We've got a good old fashioned outhouse with a composting toilet and a hot shower. And when I say hot, I mean hot. We've got a thousand litre tank at the back that collects the rainwater from the roof. That goes through to our shower. Our shower is powered by solar with our jackery. But in the future, we might, and I'm not ruling it out, add a little extension with a bathroom to the barn, just so it's a little bit closer. It only needs to be something small. And as I'm saying this, I can see the barn just there. It's so close. I really don't think it's a big deal going to the toilet, but I know that you never know. The next question is, who's the guy who's holding the camera? Because there's lots of shots recently where it's just me and B and there's a camera that's moving which definitely isn't on a tripod and that is Ricky he reached out to us he was actually a subscriber and said if you need any help let us know and we ended up hiring him now for three days a week to help us film the videos and just do various bits around the land so me and B can really focus on getting this barn conversion completely finished. Another question that cropped up an awful lot and I totally understand why is what's gonna happen with this place if we go away? If we go away in the van, if we go on holiday, if we go traveling, what about the goats, what about the chickens, what about the cats, what about the barn? And the answer is house sitters. We're really fortunate in that we know a really good amount of people out here who are really kind and helpful and look after our pets and the barn whenever we go away and actually we've got one just come in I think tomorrow because we're leaving to go to Iceland and uh, they're gonna be looking after everyone and getting into the uh, Portuguese spirit <laughs> A more serious question that we've had is how did I overcome or deal with my depression? I've definitely not overcome my depression. It's still there in the background. I've been dealing with it for a long, long time, many years. It was here way before last year, unfortunately. And I will do a video, I think at some point, explaining everything because I know that we kind of didn't really go into details about it other than I took a break. But I do do a lot of things to look after my mind out here. Being in the sun really helps, being in nature, going for walks, taking care of myself, not eating gluten as a celiac. I did eat gluten for a long time as like a form of self-sabotage, not doing that anymore. Gardening is really good for my mind because it was a bit scary at first. I felt a bit apprehension. Am I even gonna be able to keep it alive? and seeing the plants every day, growing, prospering, turning into edible things, it's, it's really unbelievable and gives me a purpose. So do the animals, I get up every single morning, let them out, feed them, water them, spend time with them. They really bring me a lot of joy. So they're really helpful for my mental health. So I've just realized that I actually blend in really well and look like a prickly pear myself. And this is such a massive prickly pear, what do you call it, bush <laughs> or a tree? <laughs> It is huge. I'd say it's probably about 15 foot high. It's massive. But the question is, what do you do with the fruit that you can't consume yourself? And nothing on our farm goes to waste, apart from once last year when we were away in England, um, going back there for a month. We came back and unfortunately the apples had already fallen and some of them had gone manky. But 
everything else we use so we make jams we love just grabbing an apple off the tree grabbing oranges off the tree and now we have the goats nothing can go to waste because anything we can't eat the goats will and it's really funny watching them eat oranges they realize that it's sour and they suddenly go a bit weird so i definitely have to film that at some point I'm currently standing in the long grass which is really lush at the moment by spring it's going to be full of flowers and really lovely and it actually leads me on to the next question which is do we see a lot of snakes here the answer is yes we do see snakes but I wouldn't really say a lot we tend to see them the most in the summertime when they're out basking in the sun enjoying life um, I don't think the snakes here can kill you I know that you could possibly have a really bad reaction so you've always got to be a bit wary with animals that that can bite and don't want to be approached we never try and touch them or anything like that i have also seen nancy one of our chickens catch a snake and try and eat it which was insane i know chickens will eat whatever they can i did manage to get the snake out of her beak it was only a small one we left that on some stones and the next day it was gone so we do see snakes i personally find them fascinating and i think theo does as well so it's always really nice when we get to see them so the next question is are you connected to maine's water and uh, the answer is no we're completely off grid so where i'm actually sitting right now is our main well that we've named Manuel. And this is predominantly where we get all of our water from. We pump it out of this big stoned wall well. There must be thousands, maybe 10, 20,000 liters of water in this well. We also have a spring fed well on the property as well. So that's where we get all of our water from, as well as catching as much water as we can off our barn roof and off our outhouse roof so that we can reuse it for things like showering and washing up. Nothing goes to waste. A question that we have had is where did we get our furniture from? And it's a bit funny and a bit embarrassing because we ended up actually getting it all from the same place completely by accident. This was not the plan. We looked absolutely everywhere for the things we got. They and just make nice stuff. Yeah, they do just make nice stuff. So the store we got the sofa from is called Gatto Pleto, which means black cat and they sell really nice things and the sofa we saw it in there and just fell in love with it and then we went in again <laughs> and saw the coffee table and fell in love with it and then the same thing happened with the chair we did look online for different things but as with most furniture that you're going to sit on you need to try it out and make sure it's comfy so Gatto Preto, there's one in Castello Branco and uh, they just had the stuff in there that we really liked and it worked out well because it goes with our style. It's really comfy and if you're in Portugal, because unfortunately I think it's only in Portugal this store, I definitely recommend checking them out. <laughs> <laughs> so the next question is, are you gonna put a railing on the mezzanine so you don't fall out of bed when you're sleeping? And the answer is, 100% yes, we are. I'm just waiting for a certain type of wood. I found one seller who can supply it for me, but I really want chestnut, and I want chestnut thin round poles. And basically I'll, I'll build a frame, and then I have really kind of rustic, wonky wood uh, going vertically for the railing, and I think it's gonna look so nice. So. I'm just waiting for that. Once I get the okay and they can supply it, then I'll put in an order and it's gonna it's just gonna take a little bit of time, but I think after we're back from Iceland, a couple of weeks, maybe three weeks, I can get that ordered and fitted. A burning question has got to be have we decided what we're gonna do with the ladder? Sladder thing, because it's gonna be a ladder, but it's gonna have steps like a staircase. And firstly I wanted to say thank you to the hundreds of people who have sent us really cool videos of different types of staircases. Honestly, people's imagination is amazing with them. I've seen them coming out of the wall, coming out of all mad places, but I've got to say, we are not going with a ladder that moves, that folds up, that does anything, because me and Theo, we know what it's like to live in a small space where you have to take things out, put them away again, in order to be able to access certain things. And personally, find it really frustrating. So I thought it'd be easier if we actually just have a fixed access up to the mezzanine. Originally, it was gonna be underneath the mezzanine, if you might remember. Then we were gonna have it at the side, but we thought for symmetry, once we stayed in that beautiful Airbnb in the UK, 
We're going to have it right behind us in the center. And it means that the banister can go right to the middle. It'll look really nice. And we've been keeping, even though it's ugly, <laughs> the silver ladder in the middle just to see how it feels. Does it make the space feel smaller? Does it get in the way? Does it block our view? And the answer is no. So we're hoping that when we build a wonderful wooden ladder out of the chestnut that we have left over, it'll work really well. Right, so the next question, and I get this on every single video, not just the Q&A. What's this hole doing? <laughs> why is it there? And a wider shot of this wall, you will notice that there's actually two of these holes. And what these were used for is for when they were building this building, they would have used like old, like, eucalyptus trees that they chopped down and they put them in here and they'd span across the room and what they'd do is they'd use that as a platform to stand on to build the rest of the height with the stone so it was kind of like the original scaffolding and I thought that was a really nice touch so what I did is I left both of them one of them's like a little nook where we're going to put stuff in there at the moment is just housing a pine cone <laughs> it actually looks really nice it's just adds a little bit of character because it's got a story to it and also it's going to be useful to put little knickknacks in it this one here you can see is very bright and that's because the sun is currently going down and what you get is you get this beautiful light that pours through in the evening it's really golden really beautiful and it's nice to just keep that because we, we obviously don't have any windows in this side and this is where the sun goes down so we thought you know what I'm going to turn that into a little window I just haven't got around to it yet so when we're back from Iceland as I keep saying <laughs> that is on the to-do list put a little pane of glass in there and I think it'll be really nice and what about the hole down here oh the hole down here so almost directly below it that is for all of our services so that's going to have our water in, our grey water out, and gas. Gas. So, yeah, there's there's all sorts of different holes at the moment that will be filled in eventually once we get the services in place. I actually love hanging out on this chair because you get a whole different perspective of the barn because I'm so used to sitting on the sofa over there. And basically, the next question is this nook behind us. Why didn't we put a window in it? it it looks like a window, it looks like it's ready to go, it's framed with the stones, but it may look like that. But actually, this lintel here that spans across these two stones, that's keeping everything above it um, from falling down, doesn't actually go all the way through to the other side of the wall, which is about half a meter deep. So these walls are really thick. And that's why they're so good in the summer. They're so, so well insulated. So basically, if we wanted to turn this into a window, we would have had to knock this stone out, which is fairly simple. But this lintel stone would have had to go and you would have had to find an, another stone that looked really nice. And we, we absolutely loved the whole shape and everything of how this looks. It, it's just beautiful. And if we were to rip it down, and put a different stone in there it would have just not looked right we think also we have a window literally <laughs> a foot away which is absolutely massive so adding a window in there wouldn't wouldn't have gained anything really a little bit more light but we've got plenty of light in here because we've got the two velux windows and we've got the little slit window in the back wall. I really like this question. What am I looking forward to most cooking and baking in my kitchen? And I've got to say, absolutely everything because I've been cooking in tiny kitchens since 2014. Even when we moved onto the narrow boat, which was 30 feet long, it had a really small kitchen, but it was still bigger than our previous van. But either way, this is gonna be wonderful. I'll have all this counter space here, there, all the stuff up there so I can store so much stuff I can bake to my heart's content and I've got to say actually I really want to try baking my own bread I've never actually done that before being a celiac means that the bread that I can buy from the supermarkets is usually pretty cruddy it's not that great it's like this big <laughs> and really expensive why is gluten free bread 
that big compared why, to a normal slice. Why is gluten-free everything miniature? It's really frustrating. And so, expensive. Yeah, let's demand, you know, a, a price reduction in gluten-free ready-made things because that would be lovely. But either way, yeah, I'd really like to actually experiment with baking my own bread. Now that I have an actual big oven to cook in and all this space to actually do kitchen things because everyone who cooks knows that even if you try your hardest, you do need quite a bit of room to cook. So the next question is, how are we going to provide power for power hungry appliances like our fridge, freezer? And we are actually going to get a company over who specializes in solar power in the next couple of months to spec us a really nice solar system because we want a really good system that we can have nice cool drinks all the way through the summer because I can tell you, Last summer, drinking warm water every day in the middle of the day really wasn't nice at all. So it's gonna change the quality of our life, definitely. So we need enough power, you know, to survive and to thrive. And you can see now it's currently 20 degrees today and we're about to go to Iceland where it's minus eight, where I imagine at this time of year, you don't get much solar power. But here we have the sun pretty much shining most of the week, so we'll be able to have a nice big solar array. And that was another question. Are we gonna put the solar panels on the roof or are we gonna have a, a frame where they sit on? And we're actually gonna have a frame. Maybe we'll double up the frame so that we can have it for storage underneath. We're not gonna put them on the roof. Um, I'll, I'll speak more about why we're not going to put them on the roof in another video. This is a rather short and simple question, but basically how old are we? And the answer is... 42. <laughs> no, I'm 32, although actually I'm going to be 33 in March and Theo is already 33. And we've been together since I was 16 and Theo was 17, although we did meet when we were 16 years old. So we've been together for pretty much more than half of our lives, which is absolutely mad. And I don't know if I've worded that in a way that makes sense, but basically we've been together forever. <laughs> okay, so the next question is, are we gonna have aircon in our home? And it's a tricky question. And like I mentioned before with the solar setup, it all comes down to the solar setup and how much that's gonna cost because I know someone who's had a solar system spec'd and it's coming in to work with AC at about 20,000 euros, which is a lot of money. So we just need to get the company around and see what our power needs are, because actually I've done some research and after living in vans and boats and traveling for a long, long time, our power consumption is pretty much minimal. It's, it's nothing, it's like our laptops, and our phones need charging basically. But now we throw a fridge into the mix, it gets a little bit more complicated. We're definitely gonna go for lithium batteries, really high quality lithium batteries. That will make our life easier and a big solar array because we get plenty of sun. So we could probably maybe run the aircon in a day, but you don't necessarily really need the aircon in the day. It's at night when you need the aircon when it's like 35 degrees and it's midnight and you can't sleep. So we'll see. It's definitely kind of something we would like to have, but it all comes down to money. We have been asked this question ever since we started the conversion and is that, are we ever gonna rent this place out? And the truth is maybe one day in the future, obviously we're gonna be living in it. So something would have to change for that to actually come around. Maybe when we go traveling or something like that. Right now, the answer is definitely no, but you never know in the future, we definitely might rent this place out. So keep your eyes peeled for Airbnb. The Indie Projects place could be on there. <laughs> So the next question is a really tricky one. It's where do you see yourself in the next five years? We have some incredible plans, some incredible ideas, and some things that are actually in the works and actually quite close to happening, which is very exciting. And we can't wait to bring you guys along for what they are. You will never guess. <laughs> <laughs> so you can try in the comments and guess what we've got planned, but it's just mind blowing, absolutely mind blowing. And we're both so excited about it. And I'm just excited on the next step of this project. So once we're finished inside, I can finish off the pointing on the front wall and the side gable end. And then 
we get to do all of the landscaping which I've really been looking forward to so there's going to be lots of gravel involved <laughs> lots of stone building lots of wall building and like f making a fire pit area making a little swimming area for the summer there's so much to come so if you're not subscribed subscribe now because it's going to be amazing I really like this question and it's how did Fernando come to us and it's such a sweet story because it was actually and I remember it perfectly it was my sister's birthday and it was the day that we got the massive ridge beam up on the barn me and Theo at the end of getting that up had to go to Castello to get some more supplies and as we were going through a village there was a tiny kitten in the road and when I say tiny I mean tiny he was about this big and that's an unusual sight you do see kittens and cats around but not that often especially not in the middle of the road so we obviously stopped i picked him up put him to the side of the road we were in a village i put him next to a house i thought maybe he'd just got out of the house and he shouldn't be outside and when i tried to get back in the car he ran after me and i was obviously torn because there was this beautiful tiny little cat wanting to be with me and i'm just like i don't want to steal someone's cat but he so, didn't look in good condition no he? he didn't look great he had a swollen belly and he just looked a little bit rough around the edges but unfortunately that is something that you know you do see because there are cats that are neutered they have babies and you know it just goes on and on anyway i looked up and there were these two guys just over the road watching me and saying take the cat take the cat and i was like this cat i picked him up i went over to them i said you want me to take this cat and they were basically like yes take this cat so i guess they had been at thrown out for some reason because he was unwell and, and when I did pick him up and really look at him I could tell that he was very sickly he had a really congested nose snot all over his face he was so skinny very swollen belly we immediately took him to the vets because we were heading there anyway and we had plans to foster him you know we wanted to get him to good health uh, it turns out he had feline flu which is not something that's very common in the UK so I'd never really seen that in a cat here um, it is something that is quite common out here like I said a lot of farm cats they're not vaccinated so it passes on really easily thankfully Fernando pulled through he was wormed and his massive belly went down pooed out loads of dead worms it was really gross and just basically grew up with us he is like our baby we do call him baby I can see him coming over <laughs> as I'm talking to you about him because he spent his whole life with us and yeah that's the story of Fernando. The next question is what's your favorite location on our property and to be honest it's really hard to pick one there's lots of beautiful places as you've seen in the videos but it changes season to season and even the time of day like right now I'm really enjoying spending time with the goats in their enclosure. Why did we get the goats and the main reason hey Matilde is because we really wanted them as pets they're really wonderful animals we love all animals we don't eat animals so it really Really felt nice to be able to have some with us these girls needed rehoming and the timing was perfect they also double up as land clearance which is absolutely fantastic and another bonus of having them but even if they didn't do that we'd still be having them like the chickens they just bring us a lot of joy and we enjoy them and also I wanted to say another question was have their personalities started coming out yet and the answer is definitely yes Matilde is really loving comes straight over to us loves to eat out of our hands rubs her head up against me Margot is definitely the queen of the pack she's the one in charge she headbutts everyone else and the two younger ones aurora and sky are battling to get top dog from margot and they're both very playful when the sun starts to set they love to run around they have zoomies they go crazy it's the really the sweetest thing to see so it's been really nice to see their personalities come out why do we keep them in at night and the reason for that is we spoke to lots of people in this particular area that we live in who have goats and everyone closes their goats in at night these particular goats were actually uh, put in at night as well so we thought we'd just keep that theme going there's nothing really in portugal that could bring down a goat but we do have lots of wild dogs in portugal and that could be horrific if a, a pack of wild dogs got in here they would definitely do damage uh, to the goat also we speak to the local shepherd a lot and he's got obviously a nice big herd of goats and comes past our land daily just looking for grazing land for his like probably a hundred goats and he keeps them 
all locked away. So we think like if the professional shepherd is locking his goats in in the evening and you know creating some sort of discipline then that's what we're going to do the same. In the summer it might be a different story. This is going to get very hot in the summer but I do have plans because this is just a temporary shelter and I do want to build like a wooden cabin with loads of ventilation. So in the summer they have somewhere out the way to go and, and sleep for the night. I really hope you guys enjoyed this video. Something a little bit different and I hope your question was answered. If you got any other questions, ask us in the comments and we'll do our best to answer as many as possible in the YouTube comments below. Thanks for watching and we'll catch you on the next video.